So for really large databases, you would need another approach. You can still use full transportable export import, but if we combine that with incremental backups, this can really make a difference in the amount of downtime that we need to copy the database. In this example, I have a 12102 database running. This is my source database and it runs on-prem. And I want to migrate that into an empty new PDB that I've created in the cloud. In my source database, for simplicity, I only have the system and data table space. I've left out details about sysox and undo and so forth. In my empty new 19C PDB, I only have a system table space. And if you note the colors, blue and green, this indicates that they're running on a different Indian format. First, I do a level zero image file backup from the source, copy it to the target, and then I can use RMAN to convert the data file into the new Indian format. Once I've done that, and that can take hours, days, many days, if you have 500 terabyte database to migrate, this can really take a long time. But the source database is up and running, so who cares? Next, I can do a level one incremental backup. So I'll be taking the last changes from my, since my level zero and then apply them on the target database. And I can do as many level zero backups as I want. And if I run them in a continuous loop, the time it takes to, to do the incremental backup and apply it on the target database gets really small. When it's time to complete the migration, I set the data table space read only. So now I have downtime, no further changes. And now I can do the final incremental backup. Hopefully this incremental backup should complete very fast and I will only have a small amount of data to transfer to the cloud and uh, apply to the target database. Once I've done that, I can use data pump and full transportable export import to plug in the table space into my target PDB. Once that is done, data pump will automatically transfer all the metadata, information about users, schemas, indexes, and so forth over a database link from the source to the target database. Once that is done, the database has been migrated. So this method is really useful for very large databases. Let me show you a demo on how it's done. I'm connected to my source database. I look at the blockchain tracking view to see that it's disabled. I choose to enable it. It's an enterprise edition feature, but it'll make my incremental backup runs much, much faster. So this is highly recommended. The source database is 12102. I go into my sales PDB and look at the objects that are in the SH schema. This is the schema that I want to migrate. I have roughly around 500 megabytes of data to transfer. And I can see that all the data is stored in the user's table space. So the user's table space is the only one I need to transport. Then I log on to the target database. I can see that it's running 19.8. So implicitly, I'll be also upgrading the database to 19.8. I create a brand new empty pluggable database and I give it the same name, sales. And I just verify that I don't already have a user's table space. Then I look at the keys though. It's open, but there is no TDE master encryption key. This is a brand new database. So I create one because I have encrypted uh, table spaces. Now the key store is open and I'm good to go. Now I can configure the Perl scripts. These are the driver for the migration. These are the scripts that does all the migration. I'm on the source database host, and I've downloaded the zip file from my Oracle support. This MOS node contains all the information that you need to know about how to use the Perl scripts. Simply unzip it, and then look at the xtt.properties file, which contains the, the configuration of your migration. This is how it looks for my demo. I have the user's table space that I want to transport. And my platform is Oracle Linux, which is the numeric value 13. I have a scratch location or working directories on my source and target host defined. And I'm using ASM, so I just decide to put the data files into the data disk group. 
I also specify the level of parallel degree that I want to work with and information about the target system. And finally, I have connection strings to the source and to the target database. Now I copy the files or the, the scripts and the configuration from source to target. Next, I can start the initial level zero backup. This might really take a while if you have a very, very, very large database, but this can be done while the database is up and running, so no worry. I use the Perl scripts and the backup option, and you can see that it identifies that it has to take a backup of the user's table space. In my example, I've configured the Perl scripts to automatically transfer the data, uh, the backup from the source to the target system. And in the end, I have to manually transfer the result file rest.txt to the target system. Now, when I go to the target system, I use the same Perl script. It already has the configuration from my source system, and I simply use the restore option. It'll find the label zero backup and start restoring it into the target PDB. I can verify that by using ASM CMD and look at the contents of the ASM disk group. You can see that the user's data file is there. Now I can start the incremental backup, and this procedure I can do as many times as I want still while the source database is up and running. I'm on the source database and I simply just use the same backup command. The scripts will automatically detect that a liberal zero has been done and then do an incremental backup instead. So it's very simple, no further configuration. The incremental backup is also transferred automatically to the target system and I manually have to transfer the rest.txt file. Now on the target system, I use the same restore command and the Perl script will see the incremental backup and I start, start to apply that on the data files on the target PDB. Now it's time to complete the migration. Downtime starts and I'll be doing the final incremental backup. On the source system, I log into the source database. I create a copy of one of the table and I call it cost two just to verify that, my, my, that migration is successful. And then I set the, re the user's table space to read only. Now downtime starts. I take a final backup of the source database. And in a little while, you'll see that it complains about one of the table spaces being read only. But this is an expected error and it's ignorable. Transfer the rest.txt file to the target system. And then go to the target system. I use the same restore command to get the very last changes from the source database applied to my data files on the target. Now the two data files are completely in sync, but on the target system, they have already been converted to the new Indian format. Now I can import the metadata. I go to the target system and log in to the sales PDB. I create a directory that I can use to store the data pump log file. Then I create a database link that points back to the source database. And I just quickly verify that it works. Then I look at the parameter files that I'll be using for data pump. I've specified the network link that I just created. And with full equals yes, transport will equal always, I have specified a full transport will export import. Some best practice exclude statements information about the data pump log file, and then I specify which data files that I want to transport that I want to plug into the new database. Then I start data pump. I specify my parameter file, and I want to input the encryption password. Once I've input the two passwords, you will see that the very first operation that data pump does is to plug in the new table spaces using the data files that we copied. After that, data pump will import all the missing objects. And in the end, the import will complete. And even though there are some error, let's verify the migration. I do that by logging into the new sales database. This is the target PDB, SSH, and look at the user's tables view. And there I can see that my cost two table has been migrated as well. So this method is really useful for very large databases where you can afford very little downtime. You still use the same approach with full transportable export import, 
But using incremental backups, you can keep the downtime really low.